Good evening, people. Good evening. How you all doing? This is Fair Journey. Today is November 11, 2022, and the time is about 11, uh, about 11.18 p.m. Yes, I hope you all are doing well. Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, that movie. Uh, that movie uh, regarding um, African lineage. Yeah, I, I, um, I didn't. I purposely didn't put down the name of that movie. Uh, the the black author. He wrote uh, books, and the movie, the controversial movie that this uh, basketball player. Uh, just uh, share the link and all the backlash. I'm going to talk about that movie, but just, you know, basically I want to just talk about uh, my experience. Um, I watched, yeah, so good evening, viewer, good evening. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I want to talk about um, just how I feel about it. Um, it's about um, the, the history of who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Which character do you play in the Bible? The uh, Old Testament. Which character are you? And I, I, um, well, it's hard for me to really explain myself. Um, what do I really want to talk about? Now, I saw the whole movie. It's over three hours long. And uh, it was deep. And it was hard for me to focus on. You know, I want to be honest. It was hard for me to focus on. Um, it was a lot of material. Yes, good evening, viewer. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, it was it was hard to follow. A uh, very intense, just a lot of information. And again, I saw, I watched the whole thing, and then I I I I, I got it yesterday. I think it was yesterday. No, two days ago. It was two days. Well, I went through it. And then this morning, you know, I was going through it bit by bit. Yeah, it was just so rich. See, if you're new with certain names of people, locations, you know, um, you have to process all that information. And so those of you um, who want to get it, just be prepared that... Um, it, it's, it's, it's intense, the information, at least how I process things, when people are talking very um, excited or with in, intensity, my mind starts to race. It's hard for me to, like, you know, it's just how my mind goes. It, it, it's, it's like I, my brain has to quiet down for me to really receive the information, you know, I can hear perfectly well what they're saying, but it's just so much. And so I have to, like, reverse it, you know, uh, reverse the movie, you know, and play it again and again and again. Um, yeah, it, what, it, what I find interesting, um, um, I would say maybe might have been two parts of the movie that someone might feel, you know, um, offended a little bit. But overall, um, it was very interesting. And I, I, I think it was overplayed, the negativity about it. It's like, um, it's like a, a, a little speck of dust maybe on, on on the mirror. And then you go out and just smear everything all over. 
it, it, it really, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, um, I didn't think it was something to make as big a deal about the movie. Um, and to punish that guy for just sharing a link of the movie, I think that is overkill. For, for watching the whole thing, I watched the whole thing, and I'm, I'm watching it several times over and over again to try to digest what the maker of the movie is, what, 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 what are they really talking about? I'm sorry, just getting a little warm in here. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Um, they, they had a part in it, um, this, this author, what was that, um, Henry Ford, uh, the, the, the maker of the, um, the, the, the Ford, um, Model T, you know, the industrialist. Uh, he had pre he had um, written a, a he started a magazine he didn't write it but he was uh, like the owner but he had an, uh, hired an editor and writers and they mentioned uh, certain things that they think uh, a particular uh, a controversial group is what what they're trying to do. And um, so that, that was considered um, bias against the group. Again, the, the, the maker of the movie is only sheer material of what this individual said, what, what they believe. So the, it could've, they could have been, um, the people who oppose the movie could have been referring to that and they'll make a mention the, the the movie made mention of what was that now um like what what did the people what did the people look like at the time of the bible who were the people of the old testament you know that like in the book of genesis the it's about beginnings of peoples peoples, you know, tribes, and who are these people? Who is, uh, you know, like with Noah, Noah is said to have uh, three sons, and one of them was, uh, what was that, it was Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and then Ham had a son, and one of those sons was uh, cursed because they, uh, what was that, I don't want to make make a mistake, what is that now? I think it was something with Ham. But oh yeah, okay, ha I think Ham, um, unco as, as it says in the Bible, uncovered the father's uh, nakedness and, and, and gossiped about what his father was, what, what, what the state of the father was. And it's very cryptic about what actually happened. And it's just a matter of interpretation, you know. But he shamed his father. And rather than, than just shaming the guy that, that shamed him, um, he, there was a curse. that He was prophesying or something. I'm not sure whether it's so much to prophesy or actually just say, you know, I don't like your son. I don't know. But he cursed, yeah, I think cursed be Canaan. And so this one thing in the Bible really put a, a damage, in my opinion, to um, the black people on this planet. I think it's very important. It, it's really something how a book called the Bible could have so much negative impact on millions of people. And I remember, see, I wasn't raised with the Bible. 
Ma many, many blacks in America uh, and uh, throughout the Americas are brought up in different denominations uh, under the Bible. And it shapes our thinking. Uh, and even if you weren't a reader of the Bible, or even if you didn't go to church, the culture and the sentiment of it, since many people are brought up in a church or were forced to read the Bible, it, 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 it becomes part of your psyche. And um, it co it's causing a lot of problems, in my opinion. Um, when you say in a book that's supposed to have authority and giving your history, it's saying up front that there's something wrong with certain people and some individuals, according to what branch of family you come from, is cursed. And if someone is cursed, then it's given like the permission to abuse any descendant from that branch. And it's actually causing division. Does anybody hear me out there? Does anybody hear me out there, what, what I'm trying to say? And this is what's happening. And so when you have this literature and you're being programmed by it over the years, over and over and over again, and then you're supposed to be waiting for a deliverer, but in the meanwhile, you're suffering. And it's like justified hatred against you. Because they just opened the, someone who just opened up a book and said, well, well, God said, well, God's uh, um, um, helper, you know, uh, Noah, you know, Noah loved God and, and, and he, he said this about you. And I think this is what's stemming people's identity of not, not wanting to be belong to a certain group. You know, in the, in the United States, where I'm from, it's like the whole thing now with uh, black America is to, you know, many of us are separating ourselves from our so-called blackness. We don't even want to say the word black anymore. Yes, black in a, a Western culture has a very, very negative connotation. But in my spiritual journey, I see that, you know, the color itself black is a very rich color. It's a very beautiful color. And, you know, life comes out of blackness. Did you know that? You have the soil. You're planting a seed. It, it can only grow in darkness. The rich pigments of that soil, it, it, it thrives on it. And I started to get a, a, to awaken to the uh, negativity of, of certain words. You are taught words. You are taught its meaning. And you know meanings can change. So I started to really question things. What makes other people better than others? And living in the Americas, uh, for the, what's that, the past 400 years, right? People wanted to be, to be associated with a particular group coming from Africa in particular, that you were taught certain things, negative things about yourself. And the Bible was used to um, shape your mind, shape the way you think about yourself. And you were taught that you, be you belong to a particular group, character in the Bible, that you were cursed. But if you really analyze the Bible, you know that the first few uh, chapters of that book, it, it doesn't, the, the Bible, the, the, with, with Genesis, 
Do you know the mo most of Genesis is really discussing black people? Ham. The characters of the, 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 the descendants of Ham. They're the most, uh, most uh, populous. They're the most uh, descendants. If you look at it. And there was nothing negative really about them. If you really just read it. They were blessed. And in fact, they lived in the land of what they call Canaan. And the people of Canaan were very, very rich. They were into agriculture. They, they, they were so um, talented in growing uh, fruit. Remember in, in, in the, the chapters, it said that they, they were carrying grapes that were so big that it needed was that several people to carry one head of grapes. These were talented people, according to the Bible. Much of the characters in the Bible, in, in the book of Genesis, are all about people of color, black people. But you're going to take a little fragment of what Noah says about a particular group and believe what, what Noah says. How could Noah, who was um, drunk at the time and get, getting over a hangover, could say something so negative about someone that didn't do anything to him, cursing his grandchild? That is not love it. But um, outside of that incident with Noah and uh, his descendants, you know, um, they were flourishing. The people of Ham were all very um, rich people. They weren't starving. <laughs> they, they, they had a lot going for themselves. So what happened? What happened? And that's where the real, I would say, um, deceit of the Bible. The de deceit in that um, people twist things around. And Hollywood. Hollywood um, would disguise the people of the book of Genesis. That anybody in the book of Genesis, it seems like in, in, in Hollywood, do you notice that they're always, um, they, they, they're white people? They get Europeans to, to play them? This is a deception. This is a deception. And so that, that movie that, that I saw, the controversial movie, it, it was, oh, what, what he tries to do, the, the maker of that movie, is to see if there is a, like, they, they want to track down the descendants of these people of the Bible. Where do they live now? Uh, and part of doing this, trying to discover this, uh, genetics, language of the people and so you have to also discover well uh, to find out if if you have a people and you have co uh, modern uh, Hollywood always showing these people as white you got to find out what the ancient peoples what did they look like then is their link. And so um, he shares that like people from South Asia um, share like the language, like like the, the, the language of these people. Is it similar to the ancient language 
of the Bible days. Because again, there are the scriptures and the written material that is very old and they, they're, they're able to, you know, um, translate what they mean. And then you have modern day people who speak some of these exotic languages and to see if they're overlapping, like uh, like the word for water or, or peacock or um, you know, certain things, everyday things. And many of the words were similar. That was amazing. And that um, they were thinking that, well, shouldn't the people of you know, the, the modern day uh, uh, Hebrew speaking peoples, you know, so, so the, 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 the place where they currently live, you know, where, where they live in, in Europe, are their languages similar to the ancient people of the, the, the locations of the, you know, the stories of the Bible? And they, they were not similar. So it's shown that the genet I'm, I'm sorry, uh, linguistically speaking, that some of the people that claim to have some type of link to some of the characters in the Bible, that their language is not um, th doesn't tie in. But languages of places in um, South Asia, um, some groups in uh, West Africa were very similar. And I thought that was interesting. So th there is a linguistic link between these people. And again, not all the people of West Africa, but certain groups were similar to uh, ancient Egypt. They talked about ancient Egypt. To see if they have a link, a uh, linguistic link to ancient Egypt and the genetics too. And I thought that was interesting. Um, so they're saying, well, if you have these people linguistically are tied to the language of, the, their current language is has many similarities to the ancient languages, uh, ancient language spoken uh, in Egypt and um, Canaan, suggests that there's a link. And there's a genetic links as well. Genetic links, I, I was surprised at with, um, um, so what was that, uh, modern day Mexico. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it so shows that um, there was a diaspora. And also the, um, the indigenous people of Australia also. Amazing, that was amazing that um, he shared some of their um, creation stories. Many peoples around the world have their own creation stories and it's very similar to what's spoken of in the book of Genesis. So when he found that these links, the, the, the links of the, the, their um, oral history uh, the language that they speak similar, the, some of the words very similar to the words spoken uh, during the Bible days. Um, and then some of the genetics, the um, mitochondrial DNA. That mitochondrial DNA is referring to the DNA that mothers passed on to their children, both the boys and girls. And then the Y DNA, that's only what um, a male can share to their sons and so on and so on okay and uh they're, 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 some of them there were links and i thought that was amazing the um um the the y yeah they talked about the y chromosome uh the y genetics in some of the peoples and uh, uh the the americas and um and shared in in some parts of West Africa. That, that was interesting. 
Um, so there's definitely um, migration of people. Migration and over time, it's amazing that some of the customs, um, like circumcision, I thought circumcision was only with the um, people who are living, you know, um, in uh, like like Eastern Europe, people of Eastern European um, ancestry, or uh, people who are called Arabs, that you know the circumcision. But the circumcision is done in other places, and I thought that was interesting. You know, on the eighth day, they I mean, you know, um, uh, the washing of his ceremony, ceremony of washing of hands. Um, not eating pork and some of these laws dietary laws and things like that uh, they were practicing before uh, Islam invaded uh, their land you know um, yeah that, that parts of Africa you know Africa wasn't always Muslim Islam was introduced was that the year 600 something so prior to that people had their own faith system. You know, so it was before Christianity was introduced to the continent of Africa or is before Islam was introduced, what 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 did they practice? And so I thought that was interesting. Um I think really my main interest is that how a book could have so much power over the psychology of people, even my own. I would say, like, like I remember one time, this was maybe two, over 20 years ago, and uh, I was, I had, I, I used to be into the Bible. I'm, I'm no longer a Christian. I, I wasn't raised in Christianity, you know, as a child, but I acquired the religion in my early 20s. And I would say, like, I, I, left, I left the faith maybe s uh, seven years ago. And I don't regret it. But again, uh, the Bible could have, um, could teach certain principles. And a, again, a principle is something that, it's like a law, it's like, it's, it, it's beyond a law. It's something of a, um, that applies to a, a, a foundation of something. You know, like, um, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. You know, that, the ba basic laws that, that, that apply in many situations, you know. But I, I started to ask questions about the Bible. And I remember over 20 some years ago, I had this Bible and it had um, maps. I'm fascinated with the maps in the Bible. Because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, which one applies to me, right? Who are you? When you read something, don't you want to see where you fit in the picture? In the narrative, don't you? So you have these maps in some of these Bibles. And I keep staring at the, 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 the African continent. And I think part of what's going through my mind is like the, the, the negativity of uh, people. Some people don't even want to be referred to as an African. Even though the term Africa was applied to the north part of the continent, they didn't know about the rest of the continent. They did, you know, just the top part. And they, you wouldn't want to be referred to one as that, right? And oh, what's that now? So um, now the land of Canaan. Now, is it the land of Canaan? Now we, we, you know, it's called the Middle East. See that? See, people keep changing names because it doesn't want you to think certain. See, they don't want to call it Africa. 
because the negativity about the African. So they call it now the Middle East. But it is a part of Africa, right? You can walk right through it, right into the, 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 the heart of Africa, through that part of land. It's a very strategic part of land, the land of Canaan, or what they call Palestine, and now it's called Israel, right? It's an extremely strategic part of the world where it connects three major continents, the African continent, the Asian continent, and Europe. You control commerce. If you can control that piece of land, you are very wealthy. And so you have um, people who are living there now. And the author of that movie that I saw is, you know, where do these people fit in? Are there any genetics of their, 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 their living there on that land? And linguistically. And he, he has a point. There's a very, there, it's a very big point about that. If someone is not connected to that land, but somehow, because of a, 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 terrible, a terrible event that happened about 70 years ago, gave them the excuse to live in that land and then make a proclamation. And I found out like um, that they were going to consider another piece of land to call their own. And I thought that was interesting because I thought they wanted the land that they have now because of the Bible. But they were going to, to consider another piece of land. I was told Uganda. That's what I was told. I, again, I don't know. And so much fighting now. So much fighting in the world over that piece of land. Why is it so much fighting over that land? Well, one thing, it's, it's very strategic. And if you control the um, taxes, let, let's say, uh, you know, when you have to travel, because again, they didn't have planes all the time. So you control who goes through it. Let's say they want to go to Europe or Asia or Africa. And, and let's say you collect, collect a tax. You'll be making a lot of money, right? Yeah, but how I feel about... Um, oh, yeah, but what I was going to say before that, that I, I used to look in the... Um, look at my Bible all the time and fixate it on the map of what they call uh, Northeast Africa. And just wishing, like, wow, and are, um, isn't that part of the land actually part of Africa? Because if it is, then it's African. And they, ju they don't, they want you to think it's something else. So all these different names, Middle East, and they say, oh, the Arabs live in the Middle East, right? Who are the Arabs? And in, in the movie talked about that also. You have, to dis you have to study, okay, who was living where at, at a particular time? And if you have genetic samples of them, or let's say uh, historians that lived before a certain time period, you know, because you had what you call the, the the ancient, you know, the ancient Greeks, and you had they had people who wrote ancient Greeks who would um, talk about the peoples that live around them. 
and they describe what the people look like. So the, the make of the movie that I'm referring to had to get evidence that of, of people who wrote about them, who, who've met these people, and what they thought what they looked like. So that they could rule out. See, people are only looking at what they see today. What, what did the ancients look like? What did the ancients of Saudi Arabia look like? Or Yemen? What did they look like? What did the ancient Egyptians look like? And, and so I thought that was very interesting. The, um, yeah, I was very excited about, uh, he showed pictures of uh, some of the statues of, um, what was that, um, oh God, I can't remember the, the name of the king, but he was, he was a pharaoh, and I was amazed at the photos of these statues. You know, the older... Egypt is, I mean, the older, the, 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 you know, as far, the farther back you go in Egyptian history, the more African looking the people are. It was amazing, amazing. Yeah, they're, they're you know, they, they want to obscure history. And hope that you don't notice. Yeah, I remember going into Egypt, but I used to be in the military. And yes, we went to Egypt. I was in the Navy. And uh, we um, took a bus from Alexandria, the, the city of Alexandria, into Cairo. And we went to the museum. And I was just so dumbfounded. When, when uh, I entered the museum and I saw statues there was, there was one right by the entrance it was a tall, tall a statue of a tall big black dude and why he stood out to me was that he looked identical his face looked identical to this big black dude in, in the Navy, that on, on the ship that I, I lived on, and he was from Trinidad originally. I said, that guy, that statue looks just like the guy from my ship. If you look at the people, the faces of the people, with these statues, and I said, I, I, I've seen faces like this in modern day black America. But see, people are going to then try to trick you. Even though they might look like you, they'll throw in a, a, a label, though, that's different than yours. They'll call you black, but they'll call these other people um, Arab. What's an Arab? In fact, um, in, in New York City, when you fill out a job application, They'll have on that job application, you know, for you to fill out what your race is. And it says, if you're from North Africa, your 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 original, if you're the original people from North Africa, you are. Sorry about that. My finger hit the button. <laughs> yeah. This is something, I mean, I've made, I've made mention to this before. But yes, the, in, in, in New York City, in America, you can have jet black skin and um, tight curly hair, but you have to classify yourself as a Caucasian or white person because you came from North Africa. 
And the U.S. says, if you're from North Africa, and the original people of North Africa, you have to classify yourself as a white person. Now, isn't this ridiculous? They'll call you uh, Arabic. So uh, he also talked about the, the, the author of the movie. Who are the Arabs? Who are they? Who are they genetically? And again, all these people are darker-skinned people, according to the, the, the description of the early Arabs. So I said, well, who are these people who call themselves Arabs now, like in Saudi Arabia? What they call the, the white Arabs? Very interesting people. Very interesting. Yeah, see, people are keep on changing names. Well, let's say the name Berber. We're told that the, the, the Berber are the original people from like Morocco. But they are clearly dark skinned so-called African people who are Berbers. So which one is it? See, when you can, when you control history, you could determine who will be on the top and who will be the servant. And when um, genetics are at play, they can change the genetics. So you look like, you look what you look like. You just give it a different label. Just change the label. Like rather than saying, oh, the, this is South America, where you have um, uh, three major groups, you have the Africans that were transported there, you have the uh, people who are called Indians that were brought there, I mean, that, that, that were there before uh, the arrival of the European, and then, then you have the, um, the Europeans. They call it Latin America now. See, see again, um, you're changing people's identity. The bulk of the African slaves were actually brought to Latin America. But see, if you change the name and call the people Latin and no longer black, then you're um, suggesting these are different people with a different history. And you can treat them differently than people just call black. I know it's very um, maybe uh, nitpicking, but see, this is important because see, this is how people become deceived. When something is right in front of you and you can see for what it is, but by changing a name, changes one's perception. Perception is everything. That's why I'm talking and stressing this. Perception could make or break a, 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 um, a country. The identity of people. A book. The Bible is very powerful because it it is it serves as a blueprint of events because again the Bible is always talking about prophecy and if you are the target of that prophecy um, it's already setting up a mindset upon you of destruction so you're going to make it happen if you see yourself as the receiving end of a curse, you become that curse. And that's why it's very important what you call yourself and what history you want to take as your own. Do you understand what I'm saying? If someone could create a story, and it's a story that affects your psychology, because people naturally want to be on top. You're reading a book that's imposed on you. You don't really know who wrote the book. 
you told us an ancient book. And then people can say, okay, if this is about um, uh, the, the, the start of humanity, okay, which one am I? This is very, very important. Because what you perceive about yourself is that is what you're going to um, reach. And so you have a lot of people reading this Bible. And they're told that they're cursed. And you have people um, reading this program. The Bible is a program. And it's programming you for destruction. Because you're pointing at yourself that you're not favored by God and that you're waiting for somebody outside of yourself to save you. You're looking for a savior or what they call Messiah. But like um, Dorothy in the book of, you know, The Wizard of Oz, remember Dorothy had the power all along to get back home. And so, if you perceive yourself as being the oppressed of that book, and that you have to wait for somebody to help you. So, your mind is programmed to just sit on your behind and wait for someone to help you. While the people who are, want to take on that they are the, 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 the favorite of God, don't you see that they're doing better? Don't you think that they teach their children that they're better than you? Don't you think that's what's happening? In the Americas, who was told that they're cursed? Because of one little scripture in that Bible, right? And because of it, they justify their, their be, being um, oppressed. You have to really start analyzing what people, you know, what, what you read from people. Be careful what you read. Because it could be designed, a design program to hold you in bondage. Don't, start asking yourself those questions. The people who are in top, the top characters of that Bible, are they in general, when they're living here in America, are they the ruling class or not? And who's on the bottom class? And what's keeping you on the bottom is your belief system because, you know, you know in black neighborhoods, I, I'm from uh, Queens, New York. And it seems like every corner in those black neighborhoods are churches. Church, and they go there. Something they go there several times a week. Something they go to more than one service a day. And what are they teaching the people? That you got to wait for somebody to come in and get you and help you. But in the meanwhile, you're just a cursed group. And that is the mindset of these people. Why do you think so many of these black neighborhoods, why they're shooting each other? Because they're told that they are cursed. I think, in my, in my opinion, I think you need a new Bible. You need a new program. The Bible is a program. And ultimately, in the Bible, it's about the destruction of people, mass destruction of people. And then, um, and then it starts the cycle all over again. The remnant of those people, the survivors of the that uh, of the destruction, they're going to create the new Bible again. The, new, the same characters. And then they're going to place this Bible 
into a population and they're going to do the whole thing all over again. That's what I think what, what, what's happened in uh, this history on this planet. They have the same Bible because it, 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 it works perfectly against people. It talks about jealousy. It talks about hatred. It talks, it talks about so many components of the human mind that, will, that promotes jealousy and hatred. And envy. It is, an, in my opinion, it's a book of division. It is not a loving book. It's craftily uh, designed, in my opinion, and just my opinion. And it's a tool of destruction. You want to get depressed? Read the Bible. Read the beginning. It, you know, at one point, I mean, I used to be a Bible reader. I enjoyed reading the Bible. My favorite books in the Bible was Genesis and the book of Revelation. Those were my favorite. And um, it, it's just, it's just something that, you know, oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say, like, I, I would read those chapters over and over again. And I remember at one point, uh, I was also reading the book of Psalms. And then one day, th I, I forget what year this happened, but it was within seven years ago, I started to get um, anxiety attacks when I started to read it. Like I was just, you know, I've read it many, many times. And I just opened the, the, the Bible just at random just to get some reading done. And I started to get a panic attack reading it. I didn't understand what's happening in my body. I, I had to close it. I think inside, I realized there was something wrong with that book. I had something, the symptoms like that once before in the military. It was weird. I, I, I did have it before in the military. Um, it was just a, a, a period of maybe one week. And then it went away. It was a weird, weird event. Uh, yeah, I talked about that event before. I was getting a spiritual attack once in the military. It was really weird. It lasted for one week, and then you know I talked to this uh, Christian woman that I knew on this ship that I, that I uh, you know, in the military. And uh, she just said something really brief, you know, uh, and, and it, it's all that I needed. It, it cured whatever what the problem was. Never had anything again after maybe 20-something years, 20, 30 years, then boom. Really weird. Sometimes your, your mind, your, your, your body knows that, that there's something wrong. And if you're sensitive, you you you, it, it'll start to disagree. See, we, we, it's called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. You can read something over and over again, and it's really telling you something really bad about you. But your mind makes excuses for it. And, and you just totally overlook it. With the, in my opinion, the Bible is like that. To read something, oh, how it treats women. You know, you, you have, I mean, you have more women on this planet than men, but yet the book is overwhelmingly about men. Why doesn't it talk about the women? If God is equal, if God is good, why, why doesn't God talk about, you know, women? It should talk about both. You, because there are different roles that men and women play. And both are essential for continuity uh, over that uh, group of people, men and women. The Bible just focuses on war. 
And that's a big problem. If you focus on peace, you're going to have peace. Right? Doesn't that make sense? If you have a book and God supposed to have made that, God the, the creator, why doesn't God focus on um, peace and love? But everything is about money. It talks about commerce. It talks about taking over. It talks about uh, killing people. It talks about a lot of negative things. It is not something that a creator produce because it is so anti-human. That literature is so anti-human. There's nothing godly about it, in my opinion. Yes, you can learn from it certain principles. But it is not a book that promotes peace and love. But discord, disharmony, it makes women ashamed of their bodies. But you got to cover up. Don't you notice in... in um, communities where the Bible isn't uh, isn't taught, especially in these warm climates, the people the people are in harmony with nature, and they respect their bodies. They don't they don't cover up. I mean, they just there's there's no perversion in these people. But soon when you get these. Abrahamic faith systems, that's when you seem to get the perversions of humanity. Perversions of children disobeying their parents, uh, husbands against wives, neighbor against neighbor. And you have to ask yourself, why is this? Why would someone bring a Bible into an area where it's clean? Where people are in harmony. And, and, and I, I just, uh, yeah, they, he showed in the movie that he made these, um, they're, they're, they're called the little people. They're, they're tiny, they're like three feet tall, three to four feet tall. And in history, they made they are made mention of, and they seem really happy. They look adorable, in my opinion. <laughs> but you really wonder about these people. They 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 live in mountainous areas, and it's very you know tropical. And they live in harmony, and it's just amazing. It's like. I, I'd rather learn about these people. How do, how do they live in peace? I think we should stop focusing on people like them. You, you, we, we focus on these places in the world where they, um, these Abrahamic religions, where there's no peace. Because there's no peace in that book. It is a program. And the indigenous people, the, the early people of this planet, they, they got it, they got they got it right. I would love to know what they think, how they live their lives. There's no happiness here, like like I live in the United States of America. I live in one of the, the most wealthiest, strongest country in on the planet, right? I live in a place that you have more, you have many hospitals here. You have farmland here, but they're GMO now. See that? It's all GMO. They use pesticides that know, knowingly causing cancer. So how could a society like this be of God? 
You have three major, you know, Abrahamic religions here. And where they live, there's no peace. There's no logic. But you find in places that don't have those religions, they seem to be very happy. There's no GMOs. They can walk barefoot and not worry about the pesticides getting their, through their skin. They actually live in paradise. I live here in New York City. Uh, I live in, a, in an area where the people here, the, the guys here, they think they're women. They have, um, they look, they, they're under the influence of something, some drug. They wear these weird wigs that are half off their head. Um, they, some of them wear these skirts or dresses, you know, or some of them got breasts bigger than mine. They, I mean, I, I kid you not, people. I've seen this with my own eyes. This dude had a butt job and a boob job. But his muscles. I mean, he put my breasts to shame, people. And he was out of his mind. Yeah, he was living on the street. He had his, uh, like, multiple purses and bags of, you know, all screwed on the sidewalk. Just out of his mind. Do you think those people and those uh, those little tiny people, you think they don't know who they are? Do they, do they wake up in the morning and say, Mommy, am I a girl or a boy? But here in America, you're having people who don't know who they are. And this is done by design. This is done by design people. I mean, I'm born and raised here in New York City. And I'm seeing more and more mental confusion and more and more violence. It's hard for me. You know, I, I spend uh, today and yesterday at home. Yeah, so I've, I've been home for two days now. Because... um. Going outside, like I, I like to get up early and walk my dogs. But now in doing so, I, I'm getting these, um, there, there, there are more mental people out there. And um, it's getting more and more dangerous for me to go outside. And I just, you know, don't want any problems. Yeah, th this is a sickness. It is a sickness, and, and it, it's just reinforcing in me that there's no peace in the land because we have those books. And it's, it's killing people. I think the books, the different Abrahamic faith books, are the program to keep you blinded about reality. And you have outsiders. You have outsiders that are controlling the planet. I'm going to say it again. You have outsiders who, um, who by design are controlling every aspect now. They're really crunching down on the planet especially these uh, industrialized nations. I had this vision once. I, uh, um, I meditate uh, in the morning. The technique that I, I talk to you about uh, on many occasions, but basically what I do, those of you who are new to my channel, what, what I, upon awakening, awakening in the morning, I do uh, a type of meditation. And it allows me to see things. You know, my eyes are closed. And I just, you know, upon awakening, I keep my eyes closed and I just relax and just, you know, 
you know, bl you know, um, just think of nothing, and then in, uh, these images appear to me. Sometimes it's a, a like a video, or sometimes it's like a, a photo. But I saw something once, and um, I, I was amazed. It happened early in the year. Um, I saw the um, what some people talk about about the uh, so there are different names for them, but one of the names that is that they call those draconians. I saw an individual, and I, I've made mention of this. I let me just say, I saw about uh, there were about four or five beings. Four, four of them were regular humans. They looked like Europeans, and they were wearing a uh, a, a a long robe with a hood. I think the color was black, and then. The other one, the, the only one, uh, the one that was wearing the red robe with the hood, I kid you not, people, it looked like a, you know what a crocodile looks like, the face of a crocodile? That's what it had. It had a crocodile face. They were all standing, and he had a red robe on. I did not see its hands but um, or feet. It was a long, long robe. But it, it, it fit tight on his body because it was big. And I, I couldn't believe it. And so um, I, I seeing that, and I heard, I heard about these beings from occult history, you know. They exist. And I have a feeling, you know, also the movie uh, They Live. The movie They Live talks about it. But the movie They Live, they had the, the, the people looking different. He had them looking like skeletons. But, the, but, but it's the same thing, you know, really, about that, that there are people amongst us that they could make themselves look like human beings but they are not. But the one that I saw, he was visibly, you know, different. And that they control the modern system. And I think that they, that they want to terraform the planet. And they're going to, you know, really want to enslave us. And that's why they're bringing in these computers and AI. AI is going to be running, you know, controlling our mind. We're going to be the robot for AI. Look at with, um, with uh, the metaverse. What is that guy in the metaverse? He wants you addicted, you know, uh, be, be linked to this... Um, virtual reality and you can get clothes and a house in virtual reality they want you removed from this planet and to be tied into AI there are several movies that talks about things like that like the movie Ghost in a Shell Read, watch that movie people watch that movie it's called Ghost in a Shell and yeah, they talked about Africa in that movie in the very beginning. They had, yeah, in the very beginning of the movie, there, there was a, like a banquet going on. And you had, you know, uh, the Africans, you know, with the African clothing. And then you had the Europeans. And this is supposed to take place in uh, Asia. I think Japan. And they had these robots that was to serve them food and stuff like that. And the European is asking the African, oh, you know, oh, you know, this technology is great. You know, oh, my little girl learned uh, the language overnight and blah, blah, blah. The Africans replied, well, they said, we're not against technology, you know. I, I love technology also, but, 
And then what happened, the robot that's serving them the food attacked, the, uh, uh, spilled something on the man, you know, hot tea on the man, and then attacked him. Yes. And then the advocate said, see, see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, they, they, you know, you know, um, it, it's interesting that the movie showed the African as having common sense. It was really, you know, watch the movie. And then um, the movie um, really focused on this lady, this young lady who was kidnapped. And it took a, a healthy young woman, killed her, and took her brain out, and then put her brain in a computer. And it became, in essence, a slave. But it was in the police force. So it used her as uh, to work as a uh, law enforcement. They removed her memory. And she's just a rope, I mean, a, a slave. So it's, it's made to look human, but it's a cyborg. It has a human brain, uh, and then the body is a um, computer. And I think that, see, the, see, Hollywood is telling us their secret. It's telling us where they want us to go. Because, see, when you look, when, when, like the Bible, when they say that you're cursed, you're going to live a cursed life. If it says that you're going to be, um, you know, um, the end of the world, then it's going to be an end of the world. And there's another movie that talks about things like that. It's called, I think, I think it's called Payday or Paycheck with Ben Affleck in the movie. This is also a must-see movie. It's not as serious. It, it has some funny scenes in the movie but um, it's, it's letting you know about um, when you have something and you, 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 you learn about your, when you learn your future you have no future when you learn your future you have no future and, and you just fall into that, that cesspool of uh, destruction and, and that's the, 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 the meaning of that movie. You know, it, it's a great movie also. But it, it's to show you what, where, what, what happens to people when something pre-programs you to behave or expect certain things. When you expect something to occur, it usually will occur. And you will treat that thing as what, 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 what you're programmed to think of it as, good or bad. And so right now the flavor is uh, about this destruction. How could a rich nation be in such chaos? We really have to start to, to look and uh, to, to find out where this is all coming from. And you know what else I, I'm, I'm, what was coming to my mind now? Now, I saw the, the, that questionable movie, you know, the, the controversial movie that the basketball player was uh, just, he just shared a link regarding that movie. And all the, the, the backlash he's getting. Now, the movie, I, I didn't think it's anything bad, really bad about the movie. To, to get that type of negative play, you know, maybe that is by design. See, the movie came out in 2018. It's not like it just came out. The movie was made in 2018. It's 2022 now, the end of 2022. So why are they making such a big thing about something that came out in 2018? And the books also, their, their book, their, their several books and the movie. 
So why now? It's been on, on sale for all this time. So why are they making an issue about it if it's so dangerous? Well, because this famous uh, basketball player, maybe, well, if they didn't say anything about his, um, made attention to his, um, his uh, post, no one really would have thought anything of it. No one really thought about it for, since 2018. Right? No one said anything for all this time. And no one would really say anything still, even if he put something up there. Why is his... Why? So it seems like someone is monitoring what he says and does. It's my understanding that he, this particular basketball player, um, said no to the uh, the VV in his arm, right? He said no. And so they um, said he couldn't play or something like that, right? So um, why, I mean, people post things all the time. But why do they focus on him? Emphasizing his link is what's really screwing them. But I, you know, I don't think the people who are um, questioning him for sharing the link, um, they're, they're not stupid. So why would you do that? Why would you say, hey, don't, don't watch it? For you to say, don't watch it, people are going to watch it. If I, I, I didn't know about the book and all, and all the movie, I only uh, got it because they made such a big thing about it. I said, hey, let me, let me, let me see it for myself. Maybe that was the whole point. Maybe they want, maybe, maybe they want us to read his books and to watch the movie. What, what would they get out of it? Are they, is this like a, a game of chess, people? People, this is very important. This is very important. I hope you guys could hear me. This is very important. If someone is telling you don't watch something or don't read something, and no one knew about it, but you, why did you know about it? Why were you watching uh, that basketball player's uh, um, post? It sounds like maybe a game of chess played in many dimensions. To make someone watch something, and when you watch something, what are they telling you? Why do they want to tell you? Why do they want you to know? Nothing is by accident. They're not stupid. Why do they want black people to read it now? Read, read the book now? Or watch the movie now? What will they get out of it? This is very important to know. Do, do, does anyone hear me? Say, say, say you know, who... You know, if you can hear me, understand what I'm saying, you know, press one for yes. Let me know that you hear me, that you understand or don't understand. What is it making you think? What would you think if someone says, I don't want you to watch this or read this? And then you read it because it's nonstop. They're saying nonstop about this thing. And what they want you to, to read or to watch is that uh, you, your your place in the Bible that that you are uh, allegedly the the, uh, the the ancient what was it? the there there were ten tribes a, a total of twelve tribes but ten of the tribes are are lost as they say that they they, they went into exile they use the term exile. So this this author is saying, hey, you know, your 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 genetics, 
uh, some of your language, you know, your, the, the words that you speak are tied to belonging from these ancient peoples. How would they benefit? Are they trying to get, um, are, they, are they trying to force an awareness upon us? Okay, let's just say that we, you know, some of us from the, the lost tribe of Israel. So does that mean that we uh, have to go to what they call the promised land? Is that the next step? Do they want Pete Blacks in the, in the Americas? I mean, I mean uh, the United States, I think, has 40-something million people. And Brazil has 40-something million blacks there. I mean, it's a lot of people. Could you fit in that piece of land? What is it? Do they have a trick up their sleeve? What, are, what, are the, what, what do you think they're setting up us, us for? They're setting up people to do something. They're setting us up. Okay, they want us to, to watch a movie. Now, the movie that I, that, that we, that I watched, I mean, it was, it was just very interesting. I, I, I don't, it didn't leave me angry or anything like that. It, I, I, what I liked about the movie were the variety of the peoples from different parts of the world. I found them fascinating. Fascinating people. Um, I like, I like. Um, they show people from South Asia. Beautiful people, beautiful looking people. And um, sometimes people have to relocate. You have many people that live in the United States now from uh, this part of the world. And maybe people may not understand them. When, when people are forced to leave their country because of war or, or polit you know, politics or, or famine, you know, um, you're going to be at a different state of mind. And maybe that might cause friction among uh, other people. And so what I was thinking, to, I said to myself, wouldn't it be nice to meet people when they're happy? People who would like to share their culture, share their foods and things like that. See, I, I'd rather things like that, but not people who are forced to move someplace because the, you know misunderstandings could arise. And that's what's happening, I think, in, in this country. There's so many different peoples here in the United States. And it's causing people to feel insecure sometimes and... and and strife, and uh, shortage of you know housing and things like that, and this is all by design. It's like you have people working behind the scenes that want you to um, to to fight. It's awful. It's awful. I think this whole thing is just being manipulated. This is a beautiful planet. It really is. I mean, this, I mean, the land of some place, it's beautiful. I mean, there's no lack of supplies on this planet. There's water. There, there, there are people who know how to dig wells, or they might make it like a canal or something, so they can irrigate a system. There's plenty for everybody. But there's a spirit of lack being introduced to a po to the population. The people who want to create war. I hope I hope um, they get exposed. Yeah, when I was telling you what I saw, the 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 crocodile looking person. Yeah, they they really exist. The crocodile faced people, or some people call them the draconians. Or the Dracos, they are real. 
they are real. And uh, who knows, but something is manipulating the populations to hate one another. Yeah, and they use different weapons. You know, they, yeah, the, the, the scientists, I learned about the, these devices uh, these scientists develop, like the Voice of God machine. I mean, I know I'm getting, getting all over this place. I mean, <laughs> I'm talking about a lot of different things, but it's all re related. So you have science and you have scientists, and they are exploiting human nature. They're exploiting our psychology by mentally programming us through the Bible. That's one. And also these uh, devices, such as, as I mentioned, the um, Voice of God machine. It's, it's, over, it's in the internet, and it is a patented device. It's also known as Voice to Skull. But it's uh, known as Voice of God. It, it, um, it works by microphone. I mean, um, what do you call it? A micro, what do you call it? The oh, micro something. You know, uh, microwave. That's the word I'm thinking. It's it's you. It utilizes microwaves. Microwave is a very short wave, and it could penetrate this human skull, and go through the cochlear of the ears. the The cochlear of the ear is the component inside your ear that takes the airwaves and translates it into electrical impulses and sends that message to the brain, parts of the brain that uh, transcribes uh, the, the words. So you hear it, you hear it as if the, the words are spoken, like like when someone's talking to you, you hear it through your ears, right? But this thing bypasses your ears and go, gets in directly in the brain. So you hear it as if it's inside your skull. And they use these things to communicate with others, to, to, with people. And so like remember hearing that uh, like there was some war in the Middle East uh, they were uh, Muslim people, and the government, the U.S. government, took the device, and and you could sp you speak into the device, and you aim it at a the, the target who you want to hear it, and they said that this is uh, God, you know, the, uh, you know they use the other word for God, uh, put down your weapons, and so they did. They thought they were having a religious experience. So you see all those people on the street, they claim that they hear voices. Well, maybe they hear voices because they use, people are using these devices on populations to study human behavior. You have evil people, evil scientists that want to study human behavior. That's what that, you know, World War II is about. They were studying human behavior and they were implementing all these new technologies and use it against people. They're still doing uh, tests on people. They didn't stop. They are utilizing these things. They could also make people see things that aren't there with a similar type of device. You have evil people out there. So these people are being taught, some people are being targeted, and they're in fear. And so they make, they, they make them think that what they call schizophrenic. What is schizophrenic? What do they say what schizophrenia is? Someone hears or sees something that's not there, right? Well, I've, if I was seeing something or hearing something that's not there, wouldn't you get scared? Wouldn't you? 
And that's all what's happening. They're scared. They're scared shit. And, and then they give them this medication, right? <laughs> it, it, it's horrible. I think it's horrible to, to do that to people. And then some people, they, 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 I think they're just what you call psychic. You know, because everything is by um, um, what they call energy. Everything in my, everything that you experience is, is through energy. You're, you're translating an energy. You know, your brain is a receptor. And your brain is electrical impulses. And it, it could read what's in the ether. And so I think with some people that their mind, they, they, their mind, or, you know, their, their they're able to pick up these frequencies and they don't know how to shut it off. And it's always on. And it's scaring them. And they call that schizophrenia. So they say with that, you know, people who are like oh, so-called organically schizophrenic, they, they say the medicine, the, the so-called medicine helps them. But those who, if they, you know, that are being targeted with that voice of God machine, it doesn't help. So, you know, so your, your, your brain, you know, you, it could be more sensitive than others and you could pick up waves. And so I guess you have to just learn how to turn it off. You know, there's always something bad that they see. You notice that? It, it could be that, that they're seeing in, in the demonic world. I don't know. I, I don't want to sound too maudlin. But whatever it is, you have different, you know, th this planet is filled with different types of beings. Just like if you look in the ocean, you have the, the regular fish that you see. But when you go way down in the bottom of that ocean, you have different types of things. You have microscopic beings that live in the water. Microscopic. So uh, that's just underwater. So look about in the above the water. It's a multitude of life forms. And uh, some might be perceived as good and some might be perceived as bad. I think at one time... That, they, that the world was a, a better place. Basically, pe people, you know, live and let live. But something was introduced to this planet. And it's causing havoc. And I think the movie The Matrix is supposed to, it's, it's really exposing what's going on. Yeah, other beings that, you know, they, they at least the Matrix is talking about AI. Remember that that in, in the Matrix, the, it said that humanity and uh, AI, the robots, were in competition, and then the AI uh, got a uh, got dominant over humanity. And that, that's what they're trying to push on people now. They're pushing the, these uh, technologies quickly. Because, see, they know that their time is short. I think that's what's happening. It's, it's escalating technology. And more and more foolishness with humanity. Yeah, they're, 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 they're people that this... I mean, the, Christ, the, the Christian organizations, they say, well, Jesus is coming back soon. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, what do you think, people? How could a Jesus come down? How would this Jesus know who's on his side? So that, it, it's, it's letting me think that it's something more of technology, for someone to know, it, it, it has to be like a mark. Like he, they talk about the mark of the beast. Well, isn't there a mark of the so-called savior? It would have to be. It would have to be. 
but I don't think it's a spirit beer. I, I, I don't, I, I think it's, um, I, th I think it's just going to be a planetary war. You have uh, people, I mean, this is just my, my thoughts. Um, you have people in power, and some of, them pe some of them may be playing both sides, both sides of the coin, just like you have people in war. You have these industrialists, and they play both sides so that they never lose money, really. They always benefit from, you know, if one wins, then they get money for that, you know, vice versa. But this is a, it's a delicate situation. Del the planet is very delicate right now. They are desperate. They are very, very desperate. And I really, I don't, I, I don't perceive a Jesus character. It can't just be one guy. If this person had all this power, don't you think he'll be here now? Why isn't he here now? What happened to the 2,000 years ago? Where did he go? So, so, so it cannot be a God or the Creator. The Creator, the, the creator is, is orderly. The creator, when you go in nature, it's an order to the planet. If he has power, when did he use it now? But it's getting us to wait. See, that that's the dangers of scripture. Because it's teaching you, don't you don't have to do anything because uh this Savior is going to come when they come. So you just sit on your behind and just wait for him to come. And I, I think this is foolish. Foolish. You think the other side ain't uh, relying on you to just wait for this uh, Savior to come? Why can't you save yourself? Even the movie The Matrix... I, part of me was angry at the character uh, Morpheus because, see, Morpheus is way, is looking for a savior. Why couldn't he form an army like like um, they had the they were able to tap into the Matrix or download that software to learn how to fight how to fly planes, all that. Why can't he just teach, uh, put, put all those people under the same program and become mighty warriors? But he's looking for this one savior. See that? See that? And, and psychologically speaking, it's waiting for a someone that looks different than you to be your savior. And that's also what got me angry with the movie The Matrix. Now, I love the movie The Matrix. I love that movie. But there were certain aspects of the movie I didn't like. That Morpheus, a black man, the, a black character, and yeah, the, those other two black black people in the movie The Matrix, the first one. How come they weren't looking for themselves to be their own savior? So it made it it it, it made it foolish. Don't you think so? Don't you think it, it that that was the foolishness of the movie? That they're waiting for again a white-looking savior. I mean, Keanu Reeves, the guy that played um, uh, Neo, um, he's actually a mixed race. He's of Hawaiian ancestry, Hawaiian and European. Yes, um, that that was interesting. But either way, he he's of mixed ancestry, but. In essence, he looked. People would perceive him as a Caucasian, and still looking for someone outside of yourself to save yourself. He had all these tools to create warriors, uh, knowledgeable people, but he failed to use it for his uh, benefit. Really, I couldn't. I couldn't understand that. That's all that, that I thought the movie was lacking. It was great entertainment, though. 
I, I enjoyed it though. But uh, there was just th those elements in the movie that was very, very problematic. Very problematic. So where are we headed now? We had this thing uh, for the past two years, this uh, pandemic, as I call it. And they were so eager for you to get the this thing in your arm. And you don't you ask yourself these questions? Why? It, remember the first person that got the thing in the arm was a black woman of West Indian ancestry? You remember seeing that lady? It, it, that was in New York, New York City. Why did they show that? See, that's again about mind control. They get someone that looks like you and they say, oh, okay, well, they got it. Okay, so I might as well get it too. See that? See that? Yeah, there was no logic in this whole thing the past two years. Something that only less than 1% actually died from it, but to make it seem like that like 100% is, 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 is deadly. So that they use fear. They use fear to, to trick people, in my opinion. Again, your health is your health. How you want to live your life is when people start telling you, don't think and don't reason what I tell you, just do it. I have a problem with that. And I believe that it's really to usher in. I, th this, th oh, how to say this? I think the real controversy with what's happening in the past two and a half years. In my, in, in, in my opinion, I think they've tried to re-sculpt America to fit into the lifestyle of a particular country in the Far East uh, through uh, various means. Okay, um, they want you... They, they tr they're trying to make it look more and more like their country. Uh, and this is nothing against the individuals that are living there. It's about the government. It's not about the people. It's about the government that controls those people. They're, they're, right now, what, what they're popularizing are the bicycles all over the place. Bicycles galore. Um, what else? The, the, the masks. People going around with the masks. Uh, what else? There was something else. More, more foods from that part of the world. See, they want you to become so comfortable with these changes so that when it comes full force, you won't really notice it. They're, they're pre-programming you to accept this new change. They, they want to make, in my opinion, they want to make this country uh, to suit a particular country out there. And that country is the, in my opinion, the Communist Chinese Party. In my opinion, the Communist Chinese Party is like yeah the communist Chinese party uh, this is not about the Chinese people it's not about the, the, the individuals but the government and that they want to take a strong hold over the US so they're making it slowly but surely look like certain aspects of the communist regime. So if you look at like in, in New York City, yes, there's countries, other countries in the world that have bicycles and stuff like that, yeah. But it's made, it's, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. It's to make something look more 
like another place because they want you to accept what happens and what you see from that country. Uh, the, 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 if you look at where things are made. In New York City, you go to any, any store and you bring it home, you look at where it's made, it's made in that country. So things are made in that country. Um, the masks, that, that they wear that in that country. The bicycles, uh, what else? There was other things. Bringing in more people uh, to work in certain companies. Before you never saw them. They're, they're now becoming more uh, prominent in the VA hospital. Uh, what else? The schools here in New York City. Uh, I would say maybe what it looks like 30 to 40 percent of the population in the schools in New York City, the Ivy League schools, seem to all be from that location. Uh, the people that live in the, the, these new buildings now are now housing people from people that look like from that part of the world. Now, it's just like all of a sudden, boom, all of a sudden. Why is this? Why is it that uh, number 45, when he came in office, when he said America first, why did the poo-poo hit the fan when he said America first? And why is that considered a bad thing? They want you to hate your country. That's what they're doing. They're making you want to hate yourself and hate your country. They want you to think like the people in those other countries, like a robot. Not to think. To just let them do anything upon your body. And now the, the, the different companies are now bringing, bringing in more and more people. Don't you think that maybe... Um, Maybe some of them might be spies. Why all of a sudden? You gotta get down? Let me get my doggy. You, you need to get down? Or you just want me to pet you, okay? My little doggy was making noise. You have to ask yourself these questions. Now, now I'm not trying to be biased. I'm just saying open up your eyes. If you see one that, that all of a sudden something is changing and they want you to accept a certain type of lifestyle and that lifestyle seems to be reminiscent of a country that is upset because they said America first. Because they want to take, the country wants to take control over our economy. That's what it looks like. In my opinion, in my opinion, that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Yeah, start noticing now. Start noticing who are, who are your doctors now. Who, who are going to be your doctors? Who are your new employers? Who are the new uh, wealthy in you, where, where you live? And if you say no, if you say no, hey, I want to um, manufacture. Why is that wrong to say, hey, we want to stop manufacturing our own goods? You got to well, ask yourself. Well, I don't know. I, 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 it seems like you guys are very quiet tonight. Very, very quiet. But yeah, you know, I, I want, um, I want uh, peace and love for everybody. Peace and love, no matter what your race, nationality is. But for to force things on people, I think is wrong. 
to force a lifestyle to when you cannot say no. Yeah, I, I, could, I see what's happening in my perspective. In my, yes, this, this is my perspective, and, may, and I could be wrong. But I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I don't see what I see. I hope they're not trying to take over the, 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 the country. But I see, I, in my perspective, that's what I see. I see our country being taken over. And they think they're slick. And they're using movies upon uh, black America to distract us. Yeah, this movie that um, I, I just bought the other day, that, that controversial movie, uh, that the basketball player uh, posted. Um, it's it's interesting. And again, I thought they put they they made it more than the movie was. In my opinion, that was just my opinion. Um, I do not promote hatred to anybody. You know, ha hatred in the sense that to just want harm on people. No. I don't want harm on, on people. I don't want harm for myself and I don't want harm to uh, innocent people. But I think it's good to um, expose something. If you see something that's happening that's going to harm people, I think it's good for you to let people know. Hey, I think this is going to be happening. You should let people know. So, um, yeah, does anyone have any, any thoughts that you want to share today? Did anybody see that particular movie that I'm referring to? And wh what was your thoughts about the movie? Did you think that it was accurate or did you think it was inf informative? Did, did you think, it, you know, did, did you think, it, you know, what, what did you think? What did you think about the movie? Yeah, it's a long movie, and you, and um, I'm still not. I mean, I watched the whole thing through, but I still have to like go through, you know, go through with a fine tooth comb, and you know, he gives references of things. Um, but what what I want to do, like, like um, find out, like, like. If someone proposed a, a particular thing, you know, they might have a link that, you know, so-and-so uh, said this about a, a, a particular matter. Where did that person get the information? What, what's the validity? Okay, what's the validity? You need water? I'll put, you yeah, my little dog, I think he needs water. You need water, baby? I'll put you down on the ground. Sorry. See, it's really dry now. It's really dry in this room. <laughs> yes, he's drinking. She's drinking water. Yeah. Um. I don't know what else to say. But um, I. This is all by design. That's all I can really say. Um, you know, the book, the book and the movie has been out for quite a while now. But the but the individuals that want that 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 made it big made it bigger than it really was, in my opinion, um, and I think that's by design for some reason, you know, to say don't look at something because you want them to look at it. Why? I mean, what what do we benefit from that? I don't know. I don't know, but. Um, why can't why can't we just start um, examine religion? I mean, what, if a religion helps you, you stick with it. But if it's not, maybe you should analyze. I have to get up a little bit. My doggy wants to get out. <laughs> Sorry, let me just get this. You want me to open the door?
had to open the door <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah um yeah qu question question whatever faith system you belong to i i'm not here to criticize i mean my intent is not to hurt anybody's feelings that that's not my intent my my intent is to have you think and and question does something serve you or not why do you might why do you feel badly about what what you believe what what why 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 do you, why do you believe what you believe how does it make you feel why does it make you feel bad these things, these are important questions people should ask why why do you need a savior? What is it saving you from? And I remember when I used to be a Christian, I used to say to myself, you know, you know, they say, oh, um, that so and so came to, to to save me. But are you saved now? I mean, I mean, how can you say you're saved if the outcome of your life is the same as? someone who's uh, not, not of your religion. You're born and then you die. The outcome is still the same. Then they say, oh, well, you know, there's a heaven and hell. Oh, gosh. You know, life, you know, life is energy. You know, life is always transmuting. Life, you know, the, if you look at life, it's always changing. It's cyclic. So maybe heaven's the same thing. It's cyclic there. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, maybe they don't know either. And maybe they are afraid as well. You have people that, you know, you have a natural system of things. You have a natural system of things. You know, one, one thing that movie talked about, it showed these little people. I, I, you know, I may mention about them earlier uh, in this live stream, but they're the, the little people. And they are thought to be uh, the original inhabitants of the African continent. They're also found in Europe. They, they also mentioned that the, the first uh, people in Spain were those little tiny people. Those little tiny, tiny black people. And I think that in Ireland also, you know, the, in Irish um, fables, the little, the little people. But they show me as white person, but they, they were black. They're all over. I, w I was amazed. See, things like that is exciting. When, when you talk about the, like they might have been a, an, an original people on this planet, I think it's amazing. And, and we know so little about them. And they hate, you know, pe people. Uh, bother them. Yeah, I met people. Yeah, you, know, you have uh, in the the country Congo. I met someone from the Congo, and the the lady was was mentioning these little people, and people make fun of them. Isn't that horrible? It's horrible, but why? why? I I guess um, you know. People forget where they come from, and these other African nations. They, they, you, you, you know, genetically, we, we're probably all related, right? We relate to these little people, but we, but we got mixed with something else, and that's where I think those, um, you know, those those other what do you call the extraterrestrials. I know it sounds so crazy. Yeah, I, I believe that there are things um, out in other planets. I mean, it doesn't make sense for, like, I, I used to have this uh, 
picture in my room. It was of the, um, the, our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, and it had an arrow of pointing to where our sun is in that uh, galaxy. And I thought, I said, it is impossible for life to only be on that one planet. Each of those stars have planets around them. It's impossible. And I said that, that this thing is a lie. Yeah, I threw, I threw it out. I had it in my room for a couple of years. And I finally threw it out. Yeah, I had it uh, framed really nicely. Yeah, I had it professionally done. It looked beautiful. And... When I, I, I read on the bottom of the form, I didn't notice it at first. It had writing on the bottom. And it said, like, they're, they're more... I, I didn't believe it. They said there's, there's more suns than, like, planets. I said, wait a minute. If this whole galaxy is, is it's just components of itself, if you have... It's our sun, and it has what was that nine planets around you know the sun, right? So, when did those other suns out there in our galaxy have uh, planets around them, too? It's all the same, right? But it said that there's less number of planets out there or moons or something. I said, impossible. Impossible. I said, you're lying. And I knew instinctively, if there's life on this planet, there's life everywhere else. And I took that thing and I threw it out. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. I threw it out. And you know why some religions, in my opinion... Why they, they, they don't want you to meditate? See, they want you to be distracted, people. They want you distracted by what you see, what you hear, what you feel. And they trap you within those senses. You're overloaded with those senses. But when you meditate, What's actually happening, in my opinion, when you meditate, you disconnect from the 3D world, the 3D senses of, of, of seeing, hearing, smelling, uh, tasting, touching. And you disconnect it. Your body is, your, your, your energy, whatever, your mind or whatever what you call it, your consciousness, it always has to focus on something. So if it's not focused on the your your senses of the body, then it 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 tunes into other frequencies, and those other frequencies will show you there's other uh, realities, and that you'll be able to see within these realities other places people and things and they don't want you to know about those other senses so those other realities so they make you afraid they say oh this witchcraft you know what's in the Bible it talks about witchcraft well if God designed you right to have certain abilities why doesn't he want you to have abilities of what they call witchcraft. Now, I'm not talking about witchcraft of, you know, when they put poison in your food. You know, I'm not talking about hurting people. But if you have a talent to um, navigate um, your other senses, then, then what's wrong with it? If it's for yourself, not, not to impose on others. Why is it evil? Why? Because they want you handicapped. They want you handicapped. 
They don't want you to use your full potential. And you heard about the thing what they call junk DNA? What is this junk DNA? Do you know that the, the, the body, the, the, your, your genetics, your genetics is a program. Your body is a, um, a biological computer and your genetics is the software. Your genetics is the software. And it's uh, programmable. So a lot of things we do is like programmable behavior or, or reactions. Well, people want us to take these jab jabs, in my opinion, because they want to alter your genetics and reprogram you. Remember that they were saying that it's um, it's not really um, to cure you of certain diseases, but it's a gene, what they call gene therapy. Any of you heard of that? And if you've heard of that, about what they call gene therapy, why do they need to therapy your, your genetics? There's nothing wrong with your genetics. It's something wrong with the toxicity of this planet that is being uh, engineered that way. You notice they don't put those people in jail? They never put the, the mad scientists. They, that, they work at those universities. All these Ivy League schools, what are, what are they doing in these schools? They have you go to college in hopes of getting a job. You're financing their uh, Frankenstein experiments. You are financing their Frankenstein experiments upon people. That's why they're letting people go into these colleges, because they need financing. It's horrible. All this so-called knowledge, but they're using it against you. Horrible. Horrible people. Yeah. Yeah, I went to car. I, 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 I wasted my money. <laughs> I really believed that if I get a college degree, yeah, I got, I got two college degrees. I got a undergraduate and a master's degree and it didn't serve me I served it I gave it money I financed those institutions so that they can create their whatever what they're creating it's a waste of money and it's not designed to really help you it made, it made you think that by doing this, this would help you. And remember, they used to call you a, a college dropout. If you left college, you call a college dropout. Why they said it like that? Because, see, they don't want you to drop out because they want you to finance their activities. And, you know, some companies, they only hire from certain schools because that meant that you supported that institution and so you become a member. There are only certain companies that only hire Ivy League schools. The Ivy League schools are, were the colleges that... Um, they were one of the earlier institutions of education. So they got the first pick, I guess. So if you support them, they support you in the ruling class of jobs. High tech, tech jobs. Jobs in government. You notice that. And, and the other colleges, you know, Education's the education. You know, if you're learning the same subject, you're learning math or you, you literature, right? What makes it better than other? It's they're not better. It's just that you're supporting it. 
And so it's going to support you, the selected few, for those top jobs, or some, some government jobs. You know, I don't want to give the names, but they only select from those Ivy League schools. Isn't that discriminating people? Isn't that discriminating against the other people? Yeah. Yeah, some institutions right here in New York City, they only select them from certain colleges. And they're not, and it's not to say that they're smart either. I mean, when they were saying that um, fluoride is okay, is good for you, I knew right then that that was a problem. Right? <laughs> you think fluoride, did, didn't they use fluoride against those people in, those, um, in World War II? It was to keep them passive. So it so how can you say it's good for you if that if the if those um, the Nazis used it against these uh, people? Yeah, I I I haven't used fluoride in years. Yeah, I I make my own toothpaste. Yeah, I yeah I do a lot of that. I I have my own soap that I make. Yeah, I made my own soap. Um, I make oh what else? My own little perfume. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, a lot of things I try to make myself. See, so, yeah, uh, a deodorant. I use my own stuff. I use, um, for deodorant, I use um, baking soda and, and cornstarch. And you blend it. And, and, and it helps. It really, it really does. I, I don't trust anything with the aluminum. Yeah, avoid aluminum, people. Yeah, a lot of things, a lot of diseases we get is because of what they have us use on our body. And when I learned that, I said, wow, I'm going to try. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not perfect. I mean, I like uh, certain, certain foods I do like to eat on occasion, yes. But, uh, yeah, a lot of things promote a lot of dis-ease in you. So, yeah, getting back with the, um, the different realities. See, when they're able to distract you with these, some of these movies and books or uh, current events, they get you trapped. They get you worked up. See, they want you worked up. They want you worked up. But they don't want you to meditate because then you're disconnected from what could potentially harm your mind and you get to see beyond the illusion. I was told that the real world, what, what, what influences the world that we see with the natural body is the unseen world. The unseen world is the world that really controls our reality. So wouldn't it be wise, people, for you to explore the world behind this world? Because it's what's manifesting what we see. It is what's manifesting this reality. Some people know how to control and some people know how to see. Yeah, that, that's what I believe. Let me know what you think. Do you believe that there is an unseen world behind this one? Do you believe it? What, what do you believe that really shapes this world? Why do you think things have been acting the way it has been for the past, uh, what's the past three years? This will, yeah, almost three years now. What is going on? And what, you know, with this movie that came out, in tw I think it came out in 2018. What do you think the purpose of giving 
publicity over this movie. And it's a big hit, I heard. It's making a lot of sales. What is the point? What is the point? So, people, I've said enough. My, 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 voice is, <laughs> my voice is a little sore right now. But yes, this is, this is an amazing, amazing planet. Amazing people. And hopefully one day we'll find out what's really going on. Yeah. So let me go. I thank you all for watching. If you like this content, um, you can share, you know, your thoughts about what I mentioned in the comments below. Um, if you want to uh, email me with something personal about your experiences as it pertains to the topic that we're talking about, yeah, you can e email me. Uh, that, that My email is at the about page. It's a spirit of azalea at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your life is, what, what's happening in your life. Let me know what you see if you've been seeing into this other dimensions. And if you want to um, uh, donate to my channel, to support my channel, you can do so also by uh, PayPaling me. And you'll be able to f see the PayPal link uh, on my channel, Spirit Journey channel. And on the banner's right-hand side, you will see my PayPal me link. Just click on the link and follow the prompt. And any amount would be greatly appreciated. I appreciate you. I thank you in advance. Yes. So thank you for listening. And yes, and uh, have a wonderful Saturday morning and weekend. Peace, love, joy to all humanity out there, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.